What's up guys? I'm Grandmaster Shaman and welcome back to Flower Paradise and today we have another episode of our zero overall franchise mode where we try and take our zero overall team and make them into a dynasty. So I've recorded the last roughly three or four episodes without, um, you know, before I've edited any of them or seen anything that goes on here and I just want to reiterate that what we're trying to do is not just win the Super Bowl. You know, I feel like that would be a lot easier. You could probably do that in like four seasons. You just sign a bunch of free agents, a couple rookies, and then it wouldn't matter, right? The goal here is to create a dynasty. Create a team that can win multiple Super Bowls, not just one. And so to me, in order to do that, we need a lot of young players, which is one of the reasons why I did it. And we were able to win our Week 17 game against the Redskins 25-22 with a 58 overall team, which is pretty darn cool, if you ask me. But we can't really rely on that. We have a lot of stuff that we have to do in free agency. So if you guys are hyped, make sure you guys hit that like button down below for me because you already know your support's greatly appreciated as well. Subscribing to the channel if you have not done so already. And, of course, leaving a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, this is my first time doing anything like this. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to go, whether or not my commentary is going to be, um, you know, spectacular. Uh, we haven't really watched very many games yet, uh, but we will probably do more of that as our team becomes a little bit more competitive. Right now, watching games, we just get slaughtered. Um, so I want to just at least be a little bit more competitive and potentially at least have a chance to win when we watch some of the games. I did watch the first drive of the season and hopefully that was, uh, you know, pretty good. But right now we don't really have to re-sign any staff or anything. Uh, we've upgraded all of our players. Um, and so really there's not much for us to do before the end of the Super Bowl. So we're just going to sim, uh, through the end of the Super Bowl to the off season. And see how that goes for us. Um, there's obviously a lot that we, you know, need to try and get done over this offseason. We need to try and get some more talent. We got hopefully young talent that we can kind of build around as we try and make this team into hopefully like a 70 overall team or, or higher by the end of the, this year. But after two seasons... You know, the first season we really couldn't do anything. This is the first season that we really could do anything, and we were able to go 1-15. in 15. So that is absolutely outstanding. I, I was watching someone else who did a, a similar challenge where they were trying to take a zero overall team to the Super Bowl, and um, two years they didn't win a single game. It was this offseason that really propelled them. The Arizona Cardinals, so that Kyler Murray pick paid off for Arizona. They win Super Bowl 55, 16-10. With the help of Antonio Brown, of course. Um, so at the end of the season, I believe um, we should get some... Uh, yes. Our corner, Ezekiel Hughes. Um, let me see. So he did win Defensive Rookie of the Year. So that's fantastic. A 58 overall corner. He went won Defensive Rookie of the Year. So that's absolutely outstanding. He beat out my other pick out of Notre Dame, which is... You know, unfortunate, but, you know, we take what we can take at this point. Uh, and he's going to get five upgrades, which is phenomenal. So he's going to go up a few to 62, 63 overall corner, which is nice. Yeah, 63 overall corner. So that's phenomenal. We take those 100%. Um, it doesn't increase his development trait, unfortunately. But, you know, we got to take what we can take at this point. Um, as we haven't got anyone else, nobody else got any, um, upgrades. So that's unfortunate. That means our, our quarterback didn't win rookie of the year, um, offensively, which is kind of sad. So he came in second to Gary Todd. This is going to be a rivalry. I can tell Wyatt Kane versus Gary Todd. I could, I could feel this kind of rivalry between the two because Wyatt Kane got picked after Gary Todd and not only that but I traded down and basically gave the Saints Gary Todd um you know in exchange for for getting this guy at the beginning of the second round so I feel like there's a little bit of a rival we also also Jeffrey Bernard came in fourth I don't know how he only had nine catches on the season at wideout um, so I have no idea how he managed to do that, but obviously Ezekiel Hughes came in, Blair DeMarco was close, and there's, of course, Derek Cohn, our, our rookie out of Notre Dame, 
who uh, ended up 62 overall. So not, they're not all that great in terms of standings, but if you look offensively, 32nd in the league. Defensively, it doesn't even say. Were we that bad? We only were the worst by about 800. So we're still the worst offense and the worst defense in the entire league, but... It looks like Tom Brady actually didn't retire last season, which is kind of surprising because almost, he almost always retires on the first season. So he stayed with the Patriots through this season. They still didn't win the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm sure most people would be excited about that. We don't have anybody to re-sign, and we upgraded our players, so we just move on to the next week. Now, free agency is going to be interesting. I don't know what you guys expect. I'm, I'm very curious to see what this class has free agent wise we have 34.11 million is that all that's not that much i really want to get just get rid of the rest of these 12 overall players if i can god we we just incur so much penalty okay this guy this guy we can get rid of he will take almost no penalty 160k for the extra so this one's we would, we would incur a penalty of 11, but we'd be, we, we, we would basically net gain $8 million. So I am actually going to get rid of Matthew Stafford finally, um, you know, waiting it out. This guy, again, we would get a huge net gain. So I have no problem, no, not editing the player. That's not what I want to do. Um, you know, I can make him not 12 overall, but that would be cheating. Um, well, this guy we can also get rid of. Um, so he also would be a nice little addition. Okay, so this guy we would save about $7 million on. We can release him. And then most of these other guys, like, I'm not too worried about, like, some of these penalties. Like, this 600 k to get rid of this guy, no problem from me. It's just... Like, this one would suck. I, I, like, that's that's what sucks, is there are three years left on this dude's contract. He's going to be here forever. I am not okay with that. And I can't trade him. Can't? I mean, theoretically, I might be able to. I just have to get him in a trade with someone who has decent value for, like, a seventh-round pick. And I don't know exactly how well that's going to go over, but it looks like we're we're very close to not having any more 12 overall guys on the team, but I can't really release very many of these other players. Um, we're already taking $11 million of cap penalty, so I'm a little bit nervous about that. But as you can see, our offense went down quite a lot. Um, I guess we lost some players. No, we, we didn't have anything pop up, so. I wonder if somebody retired, perhaps? Ah, Damon Harrison Sr. retired, but he was 12 overall, so I don't really see much problem with that. I don't know why our offense got so much worse, but our defense is 62 overall, so, I mean, it's not the end of the world. But we're back down to a 58 overall team. All right, guys, free agency is upon us, and we can grab Trent Williams. That's not bad, uh, but Keanu Neal, I might have no quarrels taking. Uh, he could probably play free safety or corner. He doesn't have to take Von Bell's position, but that dude is 88 overall and only 26 years old. That is almost impossible to match. Speaking of almost impossible to pass up, Marshawn Lattimore is only 25 and this guy's only 26. Oh, man. This is going to be hard. So, right now, you want that much. Um, how much How many points would this be? That would be 90 points. So, it would equal the New England Patriots. So, this would be uh, a 9 million. I'm going to move you up to... I'm going to move you all the way up to a $6 million signing bonus. So that would make you have a $10 million contract, but we would keep you for seven years. So that'd be until you're 33 and you're probably quite regressed. 
Um, but honestly, I don't know if I mind. He's 88 overall. He he might be able to counter regression with how his stats go. Uh, and worst case scenario, we can trade him uh, if things start to get really bad. But I really like um, having this guy on the team. So I'm, I'm probably going to put in that 96 point bid um, for Keanu Neal. Both of these guys will almost certainly get decent bids. Um, this guy wants a, a $10 million offer as well. I don't know if I can do that. So I'm probably going to offer... 979 seems pretty fair for... Let's let's go once again up to 7 because... Or let's go 6. So I'll put him up to 31 years old. Um... I doubt he'll sign. That's 81 points, which is not a lot. I doubt he'll sign with us, but it's worth a shot at the very least. Um, and then you as well, 11 million. That's crazy, dude. I'm sorry, but I cannot go. I cannot go nearly that high, and I need more time out of you. So 77 points, not gonna be super great, but. There's not a lot I can do. But this guy has 74 points from the Bills, which is not a lot. And he's only 27 years old. So I might actually try and take a bid for you um, because I might be able to get something decent from it. So let's see what a four-year $8 million contract is. That's 85. I'm actually going to continue to decrease the offer here. I'm going to try 73 is just barely too little. So let's go up to like 3, 2. Okay, 78. So that puts us four points over the Bills. Um, and then those four guys, I think, are really all I can really do here. This guy has no offers at all. So I'm actually going to offer you almost nothing. Um... A lot of the guys last time didn't take it, but, you know, 47 points. Worst case scenario, he says no, right? Same with this guy. Um, same same scenario. Worst case scenario, he says no, and I don't get anything out of it. Like, I don't feel too bad. I'm going to try and get you on the roster for as little as humanly possible. Two million dollars. That's going to get you at 31 points. So, most of these guys, once you get into the low 80s, I can probably draft someone close that, you know, has the potential to increase. So, we'll have to see how this goes. My hope is that I at least get one or two of the guys that I offered contracts to. Um, the corners and safety would be uh, amazing because those are so helpful. So, we did get all three of them. Wow. Wow. That's phenomenal. That's actually phenomenal. We got all three of them onto our defense. That is great news. That is phenomenal news. So now we can go to Keanu Neal. I'm going to move you. Or should I move Von Bill, actually? I feel like this guy is definitely more cut out to be a strong safety. I've been increasing your zone coverage. So your zone coverage right now is 78 74 man i might put you over to free safety um i feel like von bell would definitely be more inclined for free safety than keanu neal would so if we put you at free safety i feel like that could potentially be a good fit for Von Bell and would get him obviously the playing time he needs. It looks like McLaurin and Teamer both got superstar development traits, which is amazing, by the way. Um, they rock, they're rocking it. There might be 70 overall, but hey, cool, cool, cool. Stuff. We we take what we can take, especially looking at our defensive line here. Um, that might be the next thing we need to go after. Really, though, I will say. This guy being on our team, Trey Flowers, is ruining our ability to get fr uh, free agents at this point. But look at this sa look at this secondary. Oh, man. And the linebacking core is not bad. Our defensive line is the biggest problem on 
uh, defense right now. And, of course, our offense is just kind of horrendous. <laughs> uh, Kane can develop into a better player, but most of these other guys, uh, not so much. As well, our left guard and our quarterback are probably the best parts going for us. So according to this, we have 13K left, and we have three offers outstanding right now. Uh, so the Steelers get Ibukam, and the Bills beat our offer by two. Now, do we do we increase our offer on Brandon Cooks? Because he could be a very good wide receiver for our team um, and could help out our quarterback a little bit. Marlon Mack still has no offers, so I'm not pulling out of that. I might increase this guy a little bit. It's risky, but I don't think there's very many defensive tackles in this, uh, or defensive linemen in this group. So we're going to go up 81, and we're going to see if we can beat it. So, who knows? We might be able to do it. I, I'm not too upset if we don't, to be honest. Um, I really cannot wait to get all of these dudes off of our team, so that way it will stop showing up. But we'll see. Cooks accepts the offer. He is officially on our team. That is phenomenal news for us. As we now have a top-notch young wide receiver for Kane to get the ball to. I'm I'm stoked about that. That's, that's great news. We don't have a center. We're going to have to get a center at some point. Um, but we have this draft to work with for our offense. Defensively, we still need defensive linemen, so it it all comes down to like where we pick and stuff. But we did get a few picks in the last draft, so we actually have quite a few selections, and we still have a little bit of cap room remaining. Um, so we do have Marlon Mack; he's going to take up almost no cap space. So let's look at our um, Levante David's kind of old, um, so I'm not really too worried about that. Um, we don't really need a secondary at all. Yeah, but see, this is what I was talking about. There is almost no lineman. Lawrence Guy. I mean, I might want to just pick up a lineman in general. And, you know, he might not be good or anything. But it's better than what I have now. Like, I might just take this guy. He's 69 overall, I know. But look at, look at the guys that I have below him. 64 and 63. I might take him. Uh, I'm going to go ask for the league minimum. Um, I, I don't think it hurts to try and get some of these guys. Especially, like, he is uh, not that good of a player. I'm going to try a three-year league minimum deal. It's only 32 points, but you never know. I mean, he's 23 years old. He probably doesn't know how to do math. You know, he might not even realize it. Um... That, that, that it's this guy's 25 that's not bad but the bucks offering a ton and i really don't want to do that there's ziggy ansa he's cool but old and not gonna help my team there's rasheem green he's 24 and 70 overall that could potentially not suck um, I might actually offer him a minimum contract as well i mean again worst case scenario he declines it oh he's from usc can I go below the league minimum? He doesn't deserve it. He's from USC. <sighs> Whatever. I mean, I, I, I'll take what I can take at this point, even if they're, you know, from that trashy college. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this jokingly, by the way. I'm, I'm not, you know... As, as a Notre Dame fan, I have to, I have to shit on them at, at some point. So, Tyus Bowser is only 26. He's 77 overall. I could play him at defensive end if we don't get any of the other guys. So I'm actually going to try and sign him for, again, the league minimum. Because he has no offers at all. You know what? I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll be nice. I'll sign you for a $1 million. Yeah, so 31 points. But again, like I said, worst case scenario, they don't accept. I'm not expecting too much from this. But it would be nice. So we do get Tyus Bowser and Fuller. So the 23-year-old takes our offer. But that's it. So that means that we're going to have to go into our depth chart here. 
because for the draft, I need to know where our p position needs are. So we are going to go Tyus Bowser, and I'm going to put him at left defensive end um, in our 4-3 set. So I'm going to put him at left defensive end, which is almost the same thing as left outside linebacker in a 3-4 uh, uh, scheme. So that they're, they're very similar um, in that sense, but that's nice. So look, he went up to 78 overall. That puts our team at 62. Our defense is looking pretty stout, honestly. If you look at our defense, obviously, you know, Fuller, you know, 69 overall. We've got some young guys here on the defensive line. But other than that, they're all like 70 and above uh, for the linebackers in our secondary. The offense is really what we're going to need to focus on, especially a center or some lineman that can take over the center position, uh, as well as our tackles. That are sitting at 60 uh, at 56 and 57 overall i might actually move haywood to left tackle because that seems like probably the most important position in our line and it's completely unfilled uh, we didn't get marlon mack um he didn't end up signing with us but that's you know it, again it happens i'm not too worried about it so let's get into the draft all right, so we have the number one overall pick in the draft, and this is a hard one. So let me show you the board real fast that we're working with. So there's no real true number one talent on this board at all. Um, that, that Austin Johnson is really solid. Um, look at look look at those stats. He might play th th that trash college in Southern Cal, but. Look at those look at those combine reports. Look at that A plus throw power, A minus throw on the run, A minus short throw accuracy. That's phenomenal. Um But we do have our 69 overall quarterback, and I don't necessarily want to throw him under the wall uh, like out the boat yet, you know what I mean? But if we look at this board, we also have we have a couple of other guys that we can potentially get here. We've got a running back uh, that I'm not really too concerned about getting like first overall. We have our eighth pick in the draft as well, but we do need defensive ends and we have a speed rusher and a run stopper. The problem is we're a power rush team, but look at this guy. He is a pass coverage middle linebacker and he's very good. He's extremely good. The problem is, like, he would have to replace one of our 70 overall linebackers, either one of our outside linebackers. And that's what's hard because, I, you know, as we've gone through these seasons, I really like those guys. But at some point, you kind of make the decision to move on from them. And this guy is just so talented. He's, you know, agile as heck. And he's a third in speed. And he's a pass coverage middle linebacker that's going to be a rookie. It's really hard to pass this guy up 100%. That's what makes it so difficult to, to make these kind of decisions. Um, but there's also like a right guard. He could potentially go really early in the draft because, you know, those type of guys are always very important and can be very, very crucial into helping a team um, progress here. So, you know, uh, uh, getting a right guard, especially one super agile like this guy, could potentially be good, not obviously with the number one pick, but that would mean that we would want to trade down. But I'm really debating on Roman Fields. I don't think he will be there at eight, but I don't think he will go number one overall. So let's just look real quick at our trade away picks um, to see if we can. Okay, so we can move down to three in this year's draft. I'm, I'm going to take that. I'm going to move down two slots. Yeah, absolutely. You can take that pick. He takes a left defensive end. Nick Bridges. That's fine. And then Nick Sweet. So with the third pick in the draft, I am going to take Roman Fields, the middle linebacker. 100%. 76 overall. Hidden ability. Pass coverage linebacker. He was ranked third. We took him third. That was a phenomenal trade. I will 100% take that. That is awesome. All right. So we uh, we take him there. Love that pick. Uh, that's that's going to be great. I, I'm, I'm really excited for it. I don't know who I'm going to replace, whether it's a... I might move Shazier outside 
Um, and then keep him in the middle. We'll see. Um, there's a center. Uh, there's a right guard, Holland. And there's Spite. So, we're back on the board here. We have a number of different players, but most of them are quarterbacks. And then we have our running back here that I'm not too sure about. Now, I kind of want to take a guard. Ugh, that's what makes it so difficult. So this guy is really agile, but he's projected to be a late first round pick. And right now we do have the 23rd pick in the first round. And as you can see from our board, we also have a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and two sevenths that we got from previous picks. Um, and we could totally trade down if we need to. Because I, I mean, this guy looks really good. Like, A- minus lead block, A- minus impact block, A- minus pass block finesse. He has three A talents. I think I'm going to take this guy, actually. Right here with the number eight pick. He's got three A talents. Like, that's, that's just too hard to pass up. 76 overall, hidden ability, sixth in true value. Yep, I 100% take that. That is, that is terrific. Uh, we need an offensive lineman. Uh, I will take that. So let's go and, and to the next user pick. I don't think I want to trade up in this situation. Um, and let's see. So that, this halfback is still on the board. And I, I think I'm going to take him. Yep, I'm going to take him 100%. So hidden ability, 22 years old, 76 overall. Ranked number two in true ability. So this draft has been insane. This might be one of the best, my, like, one of my most, like, well-picked drafts that I've done. Um, I don't think I want anybody else going here. So let's check out what we've got. We made three really good picks that I am very, very much happy with at this point. Um, let's see. There is a first-round talent in Neely, but I might go defensive end here. So... Let's see what we got here. So he's a late first round talent, but he doesn't really have any outstanding qualities about him. So that makes that one kind of difficult. There is this defensive tackle that's supposed to go a mid. He's very good at the, the three cone shuffle and the vertical jump, but very much B plus talent. So I'm not too sure if I want to go and commit myself to that, especially at this point. Uh, there's a solid left guard, um, early first round talent. He's got straight B pluses across the board. I need more uh, offensive linemen. I think I'm going to take this guy. 76 overall hidden ability, ranked number four in talent. Wow, this is this is just phenomenal. I've never picked so well before. I I I really don't think so. Jeez. All right, so. Looking at the rest of this board, we've got a lot of uh, locked stuff here. Um, as it looks like we, we haven't done a lot of scouting. Um, that's mostly my fault for leaving it up to the game to scout things for me. Um, it looks like we've got a halfback with first round talent this low in the draft. This guy is an, a rank, a first round talent right tackle. Early first round talent right tackle. Projected as a late fifth rounder. I'm taking him. 75. Hidden ability. Eighth in true value. Is that not insane? Am I just getting really lucky or... I don't know. But it's now the fifth round. And this is where I start to question whether or not we even need this pick. Because this draft has been so crazy... Because we now have four or three linemen that are very, very good linemen that I 100% feel comfortable starting. This guy is a first-round talent running back. I mean, I could just take this guy to just take him because I can. I mean, I'm debating it because he's a first-round talent. It is the fourth round. I might, I might not have any trouble taking this guy. I know I already drafted a running back, but look, he is the fastest running back in the draft. Yeah, I'm 100%. 72 overall, hidden ability, 24th in true talent. We took him in the fourth round. 
That's... That's nuts. That's nuts. I don't think I had a guy below 70 overall at this point, which is really crazy for these drafts, because usually you get, like, the 60 overall guys at this point. But now, now I don't have any players that are outside the first or that are at the first round. Um, I don't even have guys in the second round. I have two tackles who are expected to go as third round talents. Um, and I think I'm going to see what we can get for our fifth round pick. It looks like we could just trade straight across the board, except for the Patriots, which I might just... Oh, and I might go... Cleveland went to the Super Bowl, and the Colts are still very good. Tom Brady just retired. I'm going to go and give it to the Patriots for a pick in the... Just a little bit higher in the fourth round, because this is basically a fourth round pick at this point, you know. The first round, first pick of the fifth round. Um, so we're, we get to trade up for the fourth rounder. This, they're giving me a fourth round pick for a sixth rounder. They're also giving me a fourth round pick for a sixth rounder. So the Packers and the Seahawks, uh, I think I go Green Bay and give them this, this pick and we take another fourth rounder into next year. 100% okay with that. And then seventh round, I think we just do the same thing again. We do have a seventh round pick later. Uh, so we have a couple of fives here. Uh, I think we go and give it to Philadelphia. Get a Philadelphia fifth rounder. So we have two... We got a couple fourths and uh, a fifth. Um, now, this one could be a shot in the dark here. I like to... I like to... Yeah, I like to, to just take somebody with this pick. But I don't even know where to begin... We have a lot of wide receivers. We have a f quite a few corners. Our safeties are good. Maybe we go defensive line here. See if we can't take somebody. Oh my god. Wow. This guy's third round is projected, but sucked bad enough to be here. Wow. Wow. I might just take him to take him. This guy played at Notre Dame. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to take him. He's second in the, the shuffle. He's agile. He's 59 overall with a hidden ability. Look at these Notre Dame guys. <laughs> he has a hidden ability. No way. <laughs> it was just a complete shot in the dark. But hey, hidden ability tight end out of Notre Dame. Absolutely zero problems with that. I am... I'm 100% okay taking that guy. So let's check out the draft recap real quick just to give you guys a sense of where we landed. So let's just go to the entire NFL and I want to show you guys. Okay, I'm not crazy. So Nick Bridges was the highest overall player, but then check this out. We got Roman Fields, a middle linebacker that was 76. We got Leonard Rudolph, a right tackle that was 76. We got, oh, they got Kevin Dunbar a free safety, which is pretty good. Nash Scruff, we got 76 overall. And Brendan Booth, we got at 76 overall. One, two, three, four, four players that were 76 overall. Four of the top six players in the draft we were able to somehow get. And then we got our the top right tackle. Um, both the quarterbacks were 75 overall. And, um, you know, then it kind of goes down from there. A couple of solid players here and there. We did get our 72 overall Nate Sapp at running back as well, which is pretty darn cool. I, I mean, I we take those. We 100% take those. Uh, I have zero problems with that. Um, at, in terms of our roster right now, um, I am going to have to move uh, Ryan Chazier. So, we got Teamer Jr. and we got McLaurin, 71 and 71 overall as well. It's so hard because I like these guys so much. So, 80 overall, 81 overall, and 81 overall. That means I got to take this guy. So, I'm going to move Shazier. I'm going to move Shazier to right outside linebacker. Because we are running a 4-3, so we only have th room for three linebackers. Which puts Roderick Teamer Jr. as a backup. 
you hate to see it, mate. But Roman Fields comes in. I mean, he'll be a good backup, but I might I might honestly feel like trading him because I know that he can start in this league. I know for a fact he can. And I I, I want to give him that opportunity. But we'll see. So we decided to trade Teamer Jr., a third and a fourth round pick for an 80 overall left tackle. Um... We got free fourth round picks, uh, you know, that we just basically were handed to us, you know, for sixth rounders. So I decided to throw one of those in there. Uh, I was originally just going to do Teamer Jr. in a third round pick, uh, but they didn't take that or that in a seventh. And I'm like, you know what? I basically got this fourth rounder for free. I don't feel like it's that bad to get ourselves a left tackle. So we now have an entire, we, we drafted a bunch of linemen. Which means that we should be... Actually, I don't want to go into lineup. We should be able to just mess around with our offensive line and get everyone in there. So, there you have it. Look at that. Look at our offensive line. It is significantly better. We have a bunch of players with hidden development traits. And luckily, they didn't get spoiled for us this time. Um, that's probably because I didn't back out of the game, but... Regardless, this is what we're looking at. We have a 70 overall team going into this season with a 72 overall defense and a 69 overall offense. Uh, we've got a little bit more talent, you know, at wide out. Our offensive line is all in the 70s now. Um, I'd like to put our 59 overall uh, tight end at the starter. I know that's kind of weird, um, but I do feel like it could potentially be good. Uh, and then... I guess we'll put McGuire at starting fullback, so that way, you know, we have at least a fullback kind of there doing its thing. And then on our defensive side of the football, um, I think this is pretty much what we're looking at. Um, you know, not a bad lineup at all. Uh, McLaurin, obviously, at left outside, right, Shazier at right, um... Bell over there, Reeves, uh, solid line or secondary. Um, I like to kind of keep Cone as our third corner. No, not our second corner, our third corner. So that way we can have Cone as our third corner, and then Hughes can be our fourth corner because he is obviously was rookie of the year uh, defensively last year. Um, so that they'll still get playing time, but obviously Awuzi and, and Lattimore are just so talented; it's hard to keep them off. Uh, the board and then we'll have we'll have some tough times on our defensive line that's going to be the biggest issue that we're going to have to fix uh, as quickly as possible but I mean look at this like there's so much talent here on this team now from a zero overall team to the start of the third season we have a 70 overall team and all these players are still younger than 30 that's what's crazy. All of these players are under 30 years old. They have so much talent. And uh, we're going to wrap up this episode. So thank you guys so much for watching the off season. I hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure you guys hit that like button down below for me. Because you already know your sports greatly appreciated. Uh, comment in the comment section on your thoughts on this series. Do, would you guys like the format? Do you guys want something different? Do you guys want to see me play more games? Um, or I guess watch more games. I'm not going to be playing any games because I think that's a little unfair in terms of like If you're good at the game, then you can make a bad team good I want my team to be good because I make it good as a as an owner as a coach as a you know As the person who controls the team as a, as a whole rather than just someone who is good at the game of Madden so let me know your thoughts uh, in the comment section. If you guys haven't subscribed, I highly recommend doing that. And we'll see you all in the next episode.